morning and welcome to our online service. I'm Chaplain Amy Bauman and we meet here as a community every Sunday live on Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If this is your first time here, I'm just so glad that you found us and that you're going to be able to spend the next few minutes with us just worshiping the Lord and learning more about Him. Typically, our service lasts about 30 minutes. We start off with prayer and a quick video, maybe some worship music, and then we dive right into the sermon. So that's what it's going to look like today. I just pray that it will be a blessing and that you will hear from the Lord exactly what He wants to say to you today. Let me open with prayer and get us started. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this time that we can be together. And I just pray that you will uh, speak to us, that we will hear from your word, and that you will heal our hearts, Lord, as we are all struggling right now um, in this broken world. I thank you for this time, and I just pray that it will be a blessing, and that you will anoint me with the Holy Spirit, and that I will speak your truth with love. We love you and we praise you and we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus who saves. Amen. Let's get started this morning by worshiping the Lord. Promise 
That is who you are. That is who you are. I get it. This is a really hard season. And when we think that we have a handle on things and, and what's happening, the rules change and we're back to square one and we're trying to figure out things that we've never experienced before. And that means how we did life once upon a time is going to be different now. And that's overwhelming and filled with questions that we don't have the answers for. How am I going to do this? What's the next step? God, where are you right now? I'm not sure if I've shared this before, but truly, I wait to hear from the Lord before I prepare my sermon. I'm sure a lot of pastors, ministers, and chaplains do that, but this week was really a struggle. And, um, I don't have like a whole itinerary of all the things that we're going to talk about over the next couple of months. I prayer, I, I do prayer and discernment and wisdom on what the Lord wants to me to share for that coming week. But I struggled. And um, finally, the word that I heard was grief. And I think that this is something that we are all struggling with right now. When, when you look at the world as a whole, we are, we are hurting, we are struggling, we are filled with grief. And it may not even be something that we recognize, right? A lot of us are angry and, um, and upset and, um, and afraid. But if you look at um, the whole circle of what grief is, and, and you have your you know denial and anger and bargaining and, and you make that that circle um, that is on the screen right now I think that's what we're struggling with I think we are grieving the loss of what we love in the world and and maybe some of the freedoms that we had and some of the ways we wish we could go back and have it be like it was before and if we don't recognize what we're experiencing, if we don't recognize that we're truly grieving, then we don't know how to navigate and we don't know how to, to walk through it and get to the other side so that we can fully experience the life that, that God has for each one of us and what does that look like. To understand what grief is, you know, maybe you've experienced the loss of someone or you know someone in your past has passed away and and you've grieved and you've missed them and and you want them back the definition of grief grief is deep sorrow especially when caused by someone's death and the grief synonyms include misery sadness anguish heartache heartbreak affliction and mourning and while grief typically relates to death itself, it is my experience that grief can happen when you're grieving the death of something. Maybe that's a relationship. Maybe that is a, a, a season in your life where you were really happy and you're, you're not there anymore, so you're grieving the loss of that. Maybe it's the death of a marriage or relationship or a season in your life or a job or a dream and, and whatever grief that your experience is, it comes in different shapes and sizes. And understanding grief and the roller coaster of emotions that it brings is like trying to predict a storm. But knowing who can calm the storm, the wind and the waves, is what we need to hold on to and, and what we need to focus on today while we are in this season of grief. While grief looks different to everyone, we have to remember that, that grief is something that is a pain, a loss, something that we're carrying around and that we do need to deal with the grief 
so that we can get to the other side. I myself have experienced grief with my current husband. He lost his wife to ovarian cancer. And while I never understood what that kind of grief was, wishing that that person was still here and that they didn't go through all the things that they went through, right, in, in that illness and, and in and losing their life. I watched and, and watched to see how he handled his grief. And it, and it came in, in these storms. It, it came in these memories. It, it came in um, these moments where he was lost, missing her. And I've been married now to him for uh, 12 years, and I've definitely watched when the grief was at its highest in our marriage, and now uh, as time has passed, all that's really left of that grief is just the good memories, the love, you know, um, the cherishing, the remembering. And it's not as painful as it first was when she first died. I myself have experienced the grief of a marriage, uh, what I wished could have been, and the outcome of what it was, and the loss and the pain that we both experienced because it didn't work. I've seen other people experience um, the death of a, of a job, and they've lost their job, and out of that came all of this anguish. Maybe it was something that they really loved to do. Uh, they loved going to work, and when that job was lost, there was this emptiness inside of them that nothing could fill. We see people that, that struggle with this grief, whether it's the death of a loved one or of a marriage or of a job, and immediately, because there's so much pain inside, they want that pain to stop. And so they find ways to fill that emptiness and to stop that pain. I know after um, COVID first came on the scene in the United States and people were quarantined and stuck at home, alcohol sales increased tenfold. And people were finding a way to numb the pain that they were experiencing. We've now come out the other side of what quarantining was and staying at home, and we're seeing our numbers still rise, and we're seeing um, vaccinations come on the scene, and we're seeing people that are trying to rebuild after they've had to shut their doors to their business and, and job loss, and we're seeing that the world doesn't look the same anymore. You now can't go into businesses without wearing a mask. You now can't go anywhere without wearing a mask. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. So much changed with schools and with sports and with how to navigate going out to eat. Maybe even having families come over for uh, birthdays and holidays. Everything has changed. And we have been trying to get through each day, just waiting for there to, to turn the corner and all of a sudden everything is going to go away. It'll go back to the way that it used to be. We'll, we'll go back to the way that we once were. I think the reason that we're grieving right now is we're also looking uh, down the road a little farther and can see that it's not going to go back to the way it was. We've lost people. We've lost businesses. Things have changed. And um, we are stuck here in this grief because we are wishing that we could go back to the way that it was. And we don't know how to move forward because we've never been here before. We, we don't know what we're stepping into day after day. We don't know what's around the corner and, and what's coming and, and, and what's going to be happening two days from now. We are stuck in this grief, this roller coaster of highs and lows that are brought on by the news, by social media, by watching our family members and our friends and our community 
uh, get tested, get results, show that they're positive with COVID, see people that are sick, experience people that are dying. We are in this stage of grief. And the first step is recognizing that that's what this is, that we are experiencing grief, that we are, are stuck. And, and where do we go with that? Sometimes people will go to the Psalms to um, brighten their, their day, lift their spirits, look for hope. Psalm 13 is a Psalm of David. And he, he says, how long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foe will rejoice when I fall. You can, you can hear David's pain. You can hear his grief. You can hear him cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, where are you right now? It's really challenging right here on, on the earth. It's really challenging in my home. We're not getting along and my unemployment hasn't come yet and my kids are sick and my wife is trying to homeschool. It's really hard right now, Lord. I really need you to step in. But David goes on to say in these next few lines, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. When we get stuck in our grief and we're not able to move forward, it's in these moments that we're stuck in our pain, that our eyes are down, that we're focused on the problem, that we can't see our way out and we're feeling sorry for ourselves, and we're wishing that things were back the way that they were. We're actually living in the past, uh, going over in our mind the way things used to be, and we wish we could be back there because we had some really good times, and life was easier, and kids went to school, and there was some normalcy that we could understand and grab onto. When our eyes are focused down and we're angry and we're saying, where are you, Lord? We're not looking up. We're not looking away from our problems and to the Lord who is always consistent, who has always been there, who has always taken care of us and who has always made a way. Things might seem dark right now and we may have grief in our hearts, but from the very beginning, God has been restoring us back to himself. God has been making a way through the desert to give us a promised land. He has been bringing Jesus on the scene so that we don't have to be caught up in the plans of the enemy, that we can have salvation and forgiveness and freedom because of what he did for us on the cross. God has been consistently making a way. And as the world, and we can all watch it, right, every day, as the world continues to get worse and worse and worse in the brokenness and sin, God is still faithful. We are living in a very challenging time. I believe we are living in the end times. For however long that will be, we are getting to the end. The day of our Lord coming is, is getting closer and closer for those who live here today. And so what do we do with this grief? Where do we 
focus our attention? Do we stay camped? Do we stay camped in, in how we feel? Or do we go to the Lord and look to the Lord to help us? He is confident in his promises and says to us in Matthew 5, 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Do you need comfort right now from the Lord? We need to lean into him, to trust in him, and to go to him for our comfort, not to a bottle, not to a drug, not to something that may feel like it's filling us, but actually it's emptying us. It's destroying us. It will never give you the kind of comfort. Only the Lord can do that. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Are you feeling crushed in spirit today? Is your heart broken and you're wishing for the way things used to be? We need to press in. We need to lean in and trust in him that he is faithful as he has always been faithful and that he will continue to be faithful and provide a way. Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Maybe in this moment, as as you are grieving and you are looking at things and you are you're wondering how how everything is going to work out, how is it going to go with the money and how is it going to go with the school and how is it going to go in the future? And we have all of these cares and these worries. It says, cast your cares onto the Lord. We can walk through each day carrying around all of this stuff, all of this extra weight, all of this baggage from the world, and all it is going to do is bring us down and cause us to stay in our grief. But when we cast our cares onto the Lord and we trust in Him and we give Him all of our worries, we can move past this season of grief and step into the life that the Lord has for us, no matter what that may look like. And I know it looks different than what maybe was a year ago. But until we recognize that we need to step and to keep stepping and to keep moving forward one day at a time, we're going to miss all of the blessings, all of the gifts, all of the joys that he wants to give us in each day because we're stuck in our grief. He wants us to lean in. He wants us to cast all of our worries onto him so that we can live and and shine our light brightly for the Lord. I know that this is a hard time and I believe that the Lord wants you to recognize the season that we're in right now, that we're grieving so that we can give him that grief so that we can keep moving forward for what's to come. That's why I didn't keep the original sermon that we were going to talk about today. That's why he changed the plans that I had so that he could speak to you and let you know how much he loves you, that he wants you to, to cast to him all of your worries, that he wants to you to give him your grief, that he wants you to lift your eyes away from the problems and what's happening in this broken world and look to him and to keep your ears and your heart and your eyes on him for what's to come. Otherwise, we're going to miss it. Otherwise, we're going to stay back here trapped by the enemy in all the things that we wish could be or would be or should be and we are missing what is. I believe we're living in the end times. I believe that what we're experiencing now is only going to get worse. 
And if you want for confirmation for yourself, the Bible is filled with prophetic prophecies on what's to come. And as we look at the world and see it starting to crumble and fall away, we are living in the end times. God wants you to keep your eyes on him and to move through and away from this grief and, and wishing that we could go back. And he wants you to prepare you to move forward. And to do that, we have to stay firmly planted in his word. We have to stay committed to who God is and who he is calling us to be. We have to stay focused and keep our eyes on the cross and everything that Jesus set out to do and is doing. See, when, when he died on the cross and he ascended into heaven, he promised his disciples that he was going to return and that in the meantime, he would send a helper, the spirit of truth. God wants you to be recognizing what your truth is in him so that we can be alert and awake for what's happening in the world so that we can be prepared so that we won't be stuck in our grief but that our eyes will be on the skies waiting for him to come again we don't want to miss this i just want to encourage you today that god knows you're grieving god knows your heart and your sadness and he wants to take all of that he wants you to give him all of that grief and sadness and depression and anxiety and cares. He wants you to know how much he loves you and that he has a plan and a purpose for you. He wants you to lift your eyes away from what is happening right now and, and the pain and look to him to trust him for the future. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that, that you love us. I thank you that you want to carry all of our grief and our pain and our suffering, Lord, and that, that you want to give us your truth, your truth to stand on while we're living in this broken world. Let us remember, Lord, that this isn't permanent. This isn't our home. This isn't where we're going to stay, that we're going to go and live with you for eternity that you are preparing a place for us, Lord, where there is no more pain, there is no more grief, there is no more tears, only love, only you, only the ability to be able to spend each day with you forever. Let us lift our eyes, Lord, away from our grief and the pain of this world and focus on what's to come, trusting in you as we take each step day by day until that happens. Let us live, Lord, today in the fullness of the, the love that you have created for us to live. Help us in our grief. Help us to move forward. Equip us for the journey and never leave us, Lord. You promise to never leave us. We love you and we thank you. And we just pray a special blessing on all of those, Lord, that that are grieving right now, that are hurting, that have lost someone, that have lost a job, that are suffering, that are struggling, and that you will make yourself known to them in a real and tangible way. Help us to be your hands and feet to be able to help each other in community, Lord, as we walk through this time. Help us to love others and to forgive others as you love and forgive us. We thank you for this time, Lord. We ask that you bless us, and we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus, who saves. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being with us. And if you need anything, we have plenty of resources on my website, amybauman.com. There's a prayer wall. There's a conference. There's books. There's daily devotions. There's whatever you're needing right now as you are doing this journey. But know this, you are not alone. You are loved. You are prayed for. And we just pray that you will find this community to be 
uh, helpful in walking with you as we all walk together, doing this life together each day. Thank you for being here, and until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.